Let me ask you this. How many people right now are financially prepared to withstand the financial requirement that is going to be med school when you guys follow your, uh, your undergraduate studies? Raise, raise your hand if you know you got the money in hand, in pocket, right now. Raise your hand. Nobody? You. Awesome. We got one. How else are you guys going to pay your student loans? Like, what's your plan? Because a, a fail to plan is a plan to what? Plan to fail, right? Failing to plan is planning to fail. So what is your plan? Because one guy's got the money to go to med school after this. One guy. How, how's, how, how are you paying to go to med school? Um, probably scholarship and loans. Probably scholarship and loans. OK, do you know how much is going to be scholarship versus loans? Not sure yet. How are you going to pay for school? No idea. How are you going to pay for school? Loans and scholarships. Is that you know you're getting them or it's a hope? It's a hope. Ma'am, how are you paying for school? Get with this guy. He's got a ton of money. Good, sir. How are you paying for school? You're not sure. All right. So how are you? Oh, you had your hand up. How, how are you paying for school? Investing in stocks? You better pray for, for that recession to get kicked down the road. You know, guys, what I'm getting at is this, all right? What I'm getting at is this. There's no, there's no secret. There's no surprise. Medical school is expensive, yes? We talked about it. Super expensive. Super expensive. Good, sir. How did you pay for your medical school? Loans. You paid for it with student loans? If you don't mind me asking, can you share how much those loans were when you started, um, when, when you graduated from your residency, how much did you owe in student loans? So the Sort of showed it earlier. The average student loan is the average student who graduates owes almost two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars. My uh, my dean for my medical school often said, like, first thing she said when we walked in there was, "I'm still paying off my student loans. Um, I've been super lucky to be able to pay them off mm -hmm. um, earlier. I didn't have as many. I probably was more in the hundred thousand dollar range or so." Mm -hmm. um, Everybody, almost everybody's going to graduate from here. The first two homes I bought in my life, my very first two homes, first one was 250000 the second home was $325,000. My homes. I lived in it. Tangible asset. Real estate. When I sold it, I made money on the first home. When I sold my second one, made money on that one too. You guys are getting ready to strap a home loan a mortgage sized debt on your back with the hope, with the hope that you guys get to practice medicine at his level to make sure you can pay it off. How many people are, are excited about a mortgage sized student loan debt? Raise your hand. He's excited because he's not paying it. <laughs> Is anybody else excited about a mortgage sized student loan debt? Does anybody understand how student loan debt, the, the amortization schedule for student loan debts? Why can I go out right now and buy a Tesla for $50,000 and have that Tesla paid off in five years? But I can't borrow $50,000 to go to school and pay that off in five years. When I borrow $50,000 to go to school, by the time I finish paying that $50,000 off, it's more like $150,000 that gets paid back. Why is that? Why is that? Guys, let me tell you, all right? I've been doing this for a long time. You see, you see, you see this platinum going on right here? Don't call it gray. I'm not basic at all. You see this platinum? It comes with experience. I've been where you guys are going, except for med school. I did not go to med school, all right? But I've been where you guys are going, into the adulting world. It's real. It's not to be toyed with. It's not to be played with, OK? Now, I want to tell you, I'm not, I'm not going to give you the advice. I'm going to tell you. So that way, if any of you guys are, are friends, like real good friends, when you make the wrong decision later, you guys are going to be able to say, Major Doe told you so. You should have listened to him. All right? Listen to this. Don't take loans if somebody else is willing to pay for it. Don't take loans if somebody else is willing to pay for it. Sir, would you have rather started your medical career debt free or would you rather have started with $350,000 worth of student loan debt? Debt free is always nice. 
I mean, it, it sounds like a dumb question to ask, but the majority of you are going to take loans. I don't know why. The majority of you are going to take loans. Here's what you have to understand. Medicine is medicine is medicine. Come here. Put this on. Wow. All right. Kind of big, but sure look nice. All right. Button it up. Come on, man. Okay. Get right. <laughs> God, I, I put him on the spot, right? He's, he's a little nervous. That's all right. You look great. Thank you. All right. Now, good sir, what is your last name? Fam. Fam? How do you spell that? P-H-A-M. P-H-A-M. All right, so guys, imagine this name tape right here says Fam. All right, just imagine this. Fam, what's your GPA? 4.0. He has a 4.0 GPA, okay? When you put this uniform on, did it change your GPA? No. Did it change your last name? No. Does it change the fact that you're going to med school after this? No. What does this, what could this uniform do for you? Pay for med school. You guys hear that? Oh my God, I'm so good. This check, <laughs> this check, no, seriously, guys, listen to this. This check represents an HPSP scholarship. HP, get a pen, write this down. You guys want to know this. HPSP stands for Health Professions Scholarship Program. Health Professions Scholarship Program. Health Professions Scholarship Program. Mr. Pham, or should I say Dr. Pham, I'm going to go ahead and put that out there. I'm, I'm going to speak it into existence. Dr. Pham, what type of medicine are you going to practice? Um, general surgery, probably. General surgery. Dr. Pham, what school are you going to go to to, um, to learn medicine? What medical school are you going to go to? Uh, I haven't decided yet, but I'm looking at Baylor Medical School. Okay, you want to go to Baylor, all right? Have you looked at what Baylor costs? Um, 50000 around that per year. Per year, so you're looking at maybe, are you, well, 50,000 a year times four years. Guys, do the math, what, what is that? $200,000, right, okay? What is it gonna cost you when, you when you take your HPSP scholarship? Zero. Nothing, okay? In addition to that, the Army's gonna give Dr. Pham $2,400 plus, because every year that number goes up for uh, cost of living, $2,400 a month in an allowance, because they don't want Dr. Pham out here having to work a part-time job you know, at Starbucks or, or whatever, he, uh, whatever he's gonna do for money. So they're gonna give him a full ride scholarship, pay for his room and board, pay for his tuition, pay for all of his books, all of his lab fees, and give him a $2,400 a month through med school, okay? Guess what else he's going to be entitled to, not eligible for, if words have meaning, he is not gonna be eligible for, but he will be entitled to. He will be entitled to a residency of his choosing. So if he wants to be a general surgeon, or what, what type of medicine are you gonna practice? Yeah, general surgery. If he wants to get into general surgery, he is gonna have over an 80% chance of matching into that program. Over 80%. Sir, when you look at residencies, what's the national, the national match rate for different programs? Is it above 80% or lower, lower than 80%? Well, it certainly depends on the specialty. It certainly depends on the specialty. However, the more desirable specialties All right, guys, it's all odds. It's all odds. Do you want to go out there in the wild and strap a mortgage-sized student loan debt on your back and hope that you get matched into the residency that you want? Or do you want the Army to pay for you to become an amazing provider and have an 80% chance of matching into, the, the matching into the residency of choice? These are simple decisions, ladies and gentlemen, very simple decisions, yet the majority of you will make the wrong one. Why? It's a four-letter word. It's a four-letter word. Are you comfortable? You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm All right, good. outstanding. Thank Very you. Good. It's a four-letter word. It's called fear. You guys understand what fear means? Fear is actually an acronym. Who knows what that acronym means? F-E-A-R. Who knows what it means? No? 
It stands for false expectations appearing real. False expectations appearing real. When, when you guys, the majority of you, and I'm not gonna ask for volunteers, but I already know, the majority of you, when you see this uniform, you think of combat, you think of death, destruction, you think of war, you think of fighting, you think of a lot of jobs other than medicine. The majority of, don't, the, the majority of you do not associate this uniform with medicine. But who do you think puts Humpty Dumpty back together again? Dr. Pham. All right, when Humpty Dumpty falls off the wall, people like me, medevac aviators, I fly out to the point of injury, I go scoop them up. Come on, Humpty Dumpty, we're gonna go introduce you to Dr. Fab. you're gonna be okay. I fly him back to a, uh, to a medical treatment facility where Dr. Pham and his team of, of highly experienced and talented surgeons are waiting. And Dr. Pham puts Humpty Dumpty back together again, okay? And in exchange for his service, now, Dr. Pham, when he gets finished with, uh, when he gets finished with his residency, yes, he is going to have what's called an ADSO, an additional duty service obligation. That's where the Army gets an ROI, or return on investment, for their investment into making him a surgeon, all right? That return on investment is year for year of your residency. So how long is the residency for your, for your specialty? Six years? The Army's gonna give him six years of experience next to some of the best trauma surgeons in the world. How do I know they're the best trauma surgeons? Good sir, when you, um, when you were getting ready to, uh, to come out of the Ukraine and, um, and take your, your trauma surgery, why, why was it so important for you to have trauma surgery as, uh, as a Ukrainian national? Because we were expecting for war in, in our home and we, that's why I just went to have this. There is nothing better, there is no better teacher for trauma injuries than trauma. Where do you guys, where do you guys go to expect trauma? You go to cities like Chicago. You go to cities like Miami. You go to cities like Detroit. If you guys are gonna get into the trauma field, that's where you're gonna go for your residencies. You're gonna go to Georgetown. You're gonna go to Georgetown School of Medicine for your residency, why? Why are you gonna go to, to these hospitals? You're gonna go to LA. You're gonna to go to LA County, why? Some, somebody tell me why those, those cities are, are, have some of the best trauma teams. Why do those cities have the best trauma teams? The answer is not, yes, you. Say again. The crime rate? I wouldn't necessarily call it crime, but I'd call it violence. The rate of violence that those cities have. There's no, there's no getting around it. You know, LA is a very violent city. People in LA do very violent things. Outside of the United States, where can you find, where can you find trauma like that? South Sudan. South Sudan, where else? Afghanistan, where else? Iraq, where else? Russia, Syria, where else? And you know, you know who's over there right now? Some of those junior surgeons working with senior surgeons learning how to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. That's where you guys go to learn trauma, all right? The best part about it is you're getting paid to do it. You're getting paid very well to do it, all right? So what we're gonna learn today is a little bit about trauma management, all right? Now this, this is really no BS, this is, this is no BS. This is probably going to be something, believe it or not, that you guys are gonna come across Sometime in your life, you're gonna drive up on a car scene, that car is gonna be tilted over on its, on its roof, somebody that didn't wear their seatbelt is gonna get thrown through the windshield, they're gonna be bleeding, and you're gonna, you're gonna drive up there, and you're gonna have a trauma kit in your car. Why? Because that trauma kit might save you or your family's life, it might save somebody else's. How many people have, have driven past a car wreck while driving down the highway? How many? Just about everybody, right? How many people just did this and kept going? I do it all the time. I, I'm, I'm not a surgeon. I, at, at, the, at the sight of smell of blood, I can't do it. I can't do it. But I'll pick up the phone and I'll call 911. I'll pull over and, and wait, for, uh, you know, wait for emergency services. But I'm completely worthless as, uh, as, as an intervention um, when it comes to this, all right? 
But you guys, you guys with the goals, dreams, and aspirations, with the talent, skills, and motivation to become medical professionals, you guys might be the right people at the right place at the right time. All right? So what I'm going to do, now I have to extend each and every one of you an, an apology. I had a subject matter expert, a green suitor such as myself, that was going to come with me and teach this class. At the very last minute, the 11th hour, they could not make it. They had a family emergency. I did not have a backup plan. However, however, my backup plan just so happens to be somebody that graduated from med school. You know him, you love him. Let me bring to the stage. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Pham. Give me my shirt back. Yes, sir. But guys, seriously, here, here's, here's what I'm going to leave you with. For the month of, this is March, right? For the, month, for the month of March, we have five HPSP scholarships in the bag, ready to go, locked and loaded. The right person to take this scholarship right now is a rising junior. I'm sorry, a rising senior, somebody that's, um, that's going to be going into their senior year, somebody with a 3.6 GPA or better, and somebody that has a 507 on their MCAT. Sir, 507, not that hard. 124 has to be the minimum line scores on your MCAT. Not that hard. When you guys have those credentials, you don't even have to compete for the scholarship. You, you actually qualify for the automatic acceptance criteria. Now, if you're a little bit south of those uh, qualifications, you will have to compete against other people who want the exact same thing that you do. They want to go to med school for free, too. Now, Dr. Pham is going to go to Baylor School of Medicine. Ma'am, where are you going to go? Uh, McGovern. Where's that? McGovern. You're going to go to McGovern? Yes. Absolutely free. Where are you going to go? You're going to go to Southwestern? Absolutely free. Let me see. Who haven't I picked on yet? I haven't picked on anybody from this side. Good sir, where are you going to go? You're going to go where? UTMB. UTMB. But guys, it does not matter where you want to go. If you want to go to Harvard School of Medicine, if you want to go to Yale, Brown, Princeton, if you want to go to Ivy League schools of medicine, as long as you can get accepted into the program, the Army is going to pay for it. It is irrelevant where you go to school. The only thing that matters is that you study, you graduate, and you practice good medicine. That's what matters. The uniform you wear is not as important as the quality of your care, yes or yes? True. Guys, don't, don't pass on this opportunity. And when, and when you do, the guys that take advantage of it, Giggle and laugh at them when they, when they struggle to pay off their student loan debt and tell them you guys had a choice. Debt is a choice, ladies and gentlemen. Don't choose debt. Now, let's learn how to, how to save some lives. All right. Good to go? All right, guys. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little tutorial on suturing out. I think a lot of you guys told me you knew how to suture, right? A bunch, a bunch of you guys might have done something like this before. So uh, this is going to be actually really hard with just one hand. So no, nah, hey, I, 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 I got you. Out. Here we go. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, so a couple things, right? Let's, let's figure out what our tools are. These are called pickups. These are teeth pickups. You guys see the little teeth on them? Right? So the little teeth are for skin, right? So if you put this on your skin for a sec, it doesn't actually hurt as much as if you had just non-tooth non pickups. Scissors, you guys know what scissors are. And then this is called a hemostat. Um, this will help us tie, tie the knots and uh, take, the, take the bites, okay? So let me give you, um, it looks like we have nylon sutures, 3-0. That's the size of the suture. You guys see here it says non-absorbable. Non-absorbable sutures are sutures that need to be taken out, right? So there's actually absorbable sutures that over time will dissolve in a patient's skin. Non-absorbable sutures obviously will not. And so you might use these for places where you don't want the sutures to actually dissolve. And so let me take you through a couple of different things, right? So there's, cert, there's um, uh, instrument tie knots, there's non-instrument tie knots, there. So, um, first things first, how to open the suture? Well, actually, first things first, let's make some trauma, right? So, let's take our banana.
and uh, go ahead and uh, give it a little slice. Make sure it's deep enough that it, that it looks real. No blood, no gore. Um, all right, and so in opening these sutures, you'll see that there's a little, um, there's just a little, uh, you know, like a Pringles or a uh, chips indent. And then go ahead and take out your sutures and you'll see that there's a needle in there. Be careful of the needle in a sec. But the needle's not going to do anything unless you drive it into yourself. If it's just dangling, it's probably not going to hurt you. If you try to drive it in, it's going to hurt you. And you can take out your whole suture. Now, uh, with the hemostats, right, everybody get your hemostats ready. So the way you do that is thumb in the thumb, ring finger on the, uh, on the, uh, on the other end. The reason you do that is because it's going to give you ample control. So you'll see when I, when I take these uh, bites, I'll have my index finger on top here to actually allow me to drive exactly where I want to drive it. Some people will even hold it like this, so no, no, um, no thumb, but just sort of palm. You can palm the whole thing. Or you can, for starting out, let's just do it like we, you guys are used to, which is holding a simple scissor. Say again? Uh, let's see. There's probably a button here. Oh, yeah. Hey, okay, cool. All right. Um, all right, so everybody got their um, hemostats in their hand? Right, so thumb and uh, ring finger through, through. Index finger on the top here, on the top of the um, hemostat in order to control it. Now, where do you grab your, your needle? So essentially, you want to grab it approximately two-thirds of the way back, maybe a little bit more than that, right? You guys see where I'm grabbing that? So you don't want to grab it up here. That's near the top. Are you guys seeing that? Let me just make sure you see that, right? So you don't want to grab it up here near the top. That won't allow you to drive. That's halfway, and that's about two-thirds, right, of the way back. That's kind of where you want to grab your, your needle. And you want to make sure that it's actually aligned about 90 degrees or perpendicular to the hemostat, right? You guys see how that's pretty much perpendicular? I could make it even a little bit more uh, obtuse from 90 degrees because that'll allow me to drive in plane. Everybody there? All right, cool. We got our trauma banana. So now, in order to stitch this up, many different ways to do it, but let's start with the interrupted stitch, right? What's an interrupted stitch? We're gonna put a stitch, 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 all the way down. And actually what's important when you see a, um, when you see a gash is, if you're gonna do interrupted stitches, you actually wanna start in the middle. Because if you start on either side, what's going to happen is that over time, you're going to get closer here, but it's actually going to move away down here. So if you really want to do it like a plastic surgeon, you go right in the middle, because that's going to give you a nice, clean, clean grip. Your, other, your left hand should have your uh, pickups at this point. Right? So hold your pickups like, yeah, it's pretty obvious how to hold pickups, like, a, like that. And now we're going to pretend this is the skin. And what, what I want you to, there's a couple of different ways to do this. One is a singular bite. One is a, one is a two bite technique. And we'll practice with the two bite technique. So here's how we do it, right? So I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to start on the right side of the uh, incision here. And I'm going to come in. And what I'm going to try to do is actually come right out of the center of the, the, center of the cut. You guys see that? And then, really importantly, do not try to grab the needle with your hand. That's how you stick yourself. No good. Go ahead and grab it with your pickups for a sec. And then you can go ahead and grab it as it comes out the other end. Again, approximately 2 thirds of the way in, so you're ready for your next bite. So that's my first bite. How does it look for you guys? Looking all right? Yeah. Say again? Yeah, so what I, ideally what you want to do is you, you don't want to just get the dermis. You want to get a little bit deeper than that. So you can see I have approximately, you know, if this was normal human skin, that's about right. I would have something like that um, exposed. That's how much I would go in. I can zoom in on that real quick just to show you guys exactly how much skin I have there. You see that? So I'm not like hitting the banana. 
because there might be arteries and veins and stuff down there that I don't want to hit. But I'm not also I'm also taking a deep enough bite that I can grab grab to it. So again, I'm going to grab it with my other with my pickups, and then I'm going to grab it about two thirds of the way and be ready to go for the next bite. I'm going to pull that through. So that's my first bite, but now I got to do it on the other side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to invert the skin. Turns out bananas don't invert as easily as human skin. But I'm going to invert the skin and go in essentially directly across it and take another small bite that way. Let me do that again for a sec. I'm going to do it over, I'm going to do it over here so it's clean. Taking one bite in, coming out. Taking another bite in and coming out. All right, and then essentially I should be, it should be looking like this. Are you guys at that juncture? All right, so now let's learn an instrument tie first, right? Instrument tie is the easiest tie to do. You're going to use your instruments to do the tie. You're going to put your hemostat right in the middle. Actually, I shouldn't say right in the middle. You're going to put it a little bit more towards the side that you just came out of. Okay? And then I'm going to grab the rest of the suture, again, be careful of the needle, and grab the rest of the suture in my hand out here. And then you're going to go ahead and give me two loops around the hemostat. And then open up that hemostat and go ahead and grab the other end of the suture from the other side of the banana. And then just pull that in. And that's your first knot. You do two to lock it in. And then I let go. And I'm going to do the same thing again. But this time, I'm actually going to go in the opposite direction. So I'm going to put it back in. Remember last time I went like this? This time I'm going to go like this. Does that make sense? So instead of like this, I'm going to come like this. This time I'm only going to have to wrap it around once. And then I'm going to go grab the end of that suture and pull it through again. And for interrupted sutures, you want to do this maybe three or four times, depending on the type of suture, maybe five or six. That gives you a good knot, right? So this time again, I'm going to go in, loop it around, grab the end of the suture, come around, and go on the other side, loop it in, grab the end, come around. And if you look, I have this like, Zoom Tele for digital. Hello. Is this thing focus or? Oh, there you go. If you look, I have a nice little um, thread of like three or four knots there. And then what you would do is you would simply take it and cut it deep, and that's your first stitch. All right, you guys want to see that one more time? Or are you good? OK. All right, let's do it again, right? So everybody, grab your, grab your needle about 2 thirds of the way in, 2 thirds of the way towards the end. All right. Now, we're going to come in through the right side of the banana, and we're going to come out right in the center, and we're going to pull that out. Then we're going to open up that skin, come in through the middle of the banana, and come right out, and pull that through. And we should have a nice stitch, uh, nice stitch ready to be tied. I'm going to put my hemostat more towards that left side, do a two loops, one, two. Grab the little end that's sticking out, and pull it in nice and tight. Then I'm going to do the same thing the other way. Grab it, pull it in, nice and tight. Uh, it came off because of the banana. Is that making sense? How does that look for everybody? Yeah. All right, let's all take it one step at a time. Everybody grab 2 thirds of the way down. Tell me who doesn't have it two thirds of the way down. It should look like this. 
Everybody good there? All right. Let's go to the, let's go to our cut. We're going to go ahead and go to the left side, or sorry, right side. Go in and out of midline. Tell me when you guys are here. In and out of midline, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab it on the other side. Right, so right now my suture is only through the right side of the banana cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the skin, invert it a little bit. Use my needle to go into the middle and then out the other side. And I'll grab that. Are we here? All right. Now, needle driver down. One loop, two loops, and then go ahead and grab that other side. And we're going to pull that right through. And then another loop, go ahead and grab that other side. And we're going to pull that right through. And we keep doing that. All right, so while you guys are practicing that, I want to show you one more thing and then I'll, I'll help walk around and we can, we can do at least a couple together, which is a non-instrument tie. So if you guys thought that was uh, tough, you're going to about to be mind blown. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing for a second. This is just to get it started. Okay, so actually let me show you a single bite, right? So I was doing two bites that entire time, right? I was doing one out the middle, one in the middle out. This time I'm just going to do a singular bite. I'm just going to go all the way to the other side. You're going to be like, why didn't you just do that the whole time? That's so much easier. What the hell? Well, in reality, you can't do that all the time, right? There might be deep structures. You don't want to hit anything deep. You may want to have a better approximation. You want to understand how deep your needle driver might be going. Well, let me show you guys a hand tie for a quick sec here. All right. So I have sutures on either side of my hands, right? Can you guys see my hands? Let me zoom out for a sec here. All right. So I have sutures on either side of my hands, right? With my left hand, I'm going to grab the ring of sutures or the, the thread, and I'm going to pinch between my uh, thumb and my uh, what, what finger is it? My index, my index finger. And the other side, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I grab the sutures, and I'm going to pinch between my thumb and my index finger. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and make an X. Did everybody see that motion? So I came over, I grabbed it with my left thumb, and I came around and made an X. Let me do it one more time. I bring it around, grab my left thumb, come around and make an X. See that X? One more time, boom. And then I'm actually going to use the other side of the X, which is now my right hand, to pinch and pull under. And now I have an X on this side, and I suture it down. And then to do the other side, I would actually come around and do something like this, and then keep tying that down. So this becomes you know, a one-handed surgical tie, where you're essentially being able to Two hand that side, one hand this side, and go over and over and over again. Obviously, the key to this is just practice, right? Just a shit ton of practice, and you'll, you'll figure it out eventually. All right, so I showed you guys the instrument tie. I showed you guys a quick hand tie. Let me walk around and see what I can do to help you guys see if we can figure some of this out. Does that sound reasonable? Does anybody want to see any other kind of tie? Thumb? And I'm actually going to wrap it around my index finger, OK? And then I'm going to come around and make an X. Does that make sense? Right, so I wrapped this around my index finger. I came around and made an X. Okay? Came around and made an X. And now, actually, I use my thumb, made that X. I put my thumb in between there, so the X is now on my thumb. Put my thumb in between there, the X is now on my thumb. And then you grab it through the loop. And then I'm going to grab it on this side and pull it over. Okay. So then that becomes a 
Hi, give it a give it a shot and I'll try to help your hands through. <laughs> like this and then yep how is it like so grab it actually like this for a sec mm -hmm. okay and then that one's fine all right now you're going to come this way okay and now uh you are going to uh, hold on give me one sec here <laughs> it's hard to do it slowed down when you're it's you yeah do it so it's super hard to do slow down <laughs> okay so can you Imitate that for a sec. Yes. Okay, great. And now you're gonna come this way, okay. right? And now flip your thumb. Like this? Yep. So that you have the X essentially over your thumb. See that X uh, over your thumb? Oh yeah, right? right here. Good. Right, so that's the first part. Practice that again, right? So you're gonna come around right here and flip your thumb. So in fact, if you want, just put your thumb here. It looks like, oh no, it doesn't work that well. Flip your, so we're gonna pull this and go X like that. Actually, let me try to teach you that way. So yeah, let me. take your, grab this, take your thumb, uh -huh. grab this one, and just hang it like that for a second. Okay, I think there's like, just like this. Yep, yep, perfect, good, and good. Then so you're there, right? So you're there. Now, what you're gonna do is essentially try to get that. Put the, through the loop right here. Exactly. And then just pull like There you go. So that's, that's one, that's the start of it. So pretend this is our incision here. What I do in that case is I use my pickups to actually open up the skin and invert it, okay? Then I'm gonna go in deep to superficial. Yeah, this is not real skin. Uh, deep to superficial. This is really not real skin. I go deep to superficial all under the skin. So I'm not going to poke out and then I would grab it on one end and then I'll do a reverse. So if you looked, my first ones all went this way, right? My hand motion all went, all cupped out. In this time, my hand motion is going to go this way. So instead of starting here and coming out here, I'm going to start here and end up here. On this side, I'm going to go superficial to deep, come right out the middle, grab myself, and you can see that unlike the other one, I have no suture above the skin, right? So then I, would, I could tie it exactly the same way. I could do my same instrument tie. And let's say I did two of those, or three of those, or four of those. And then I would cut essentially down on the knot this time. Some of you guys asked me where to cut. This one I would cut down on the knot, and everything's buried under the skin, right? So there's nothing exposed over the skin. So that's, a, that's, you know, that's essentially another way to suture up a wound this time leaving nothing on the outside, which can be important to do in a number of situations, right? Maybe not in a trauma situation, but in other situations, you don't want a bunch of sutures sticking out of the skin. So I can help you guys with that too. All right, sir, come down. Sir, come down. Who else? Ma'am, come down. Come down. I'm gonna put you guys, you wanna come, you wanna come down? Come on down, all right, there, there's what, is that five? That's five. We have five, yeah. All right, awesome. What, uh, can, can you help me be the judge Absolutely. On, on proper or improper, all right? And I, I got some uh, instrument ties. fine. Okay. We're, we're, gonna, we're practicing right. instrument ties. Yeah, you, got, you guys got to bring your, bring your materials. Come on. You know what? No, no, no. Yeah, just bring your tools. I'm, I'm going to you, give you a skin pad to work on. Just bring your tools. Yeah, I didn't have enough, though. The bananas were... Absolutely. Don't worry about it. Thank you so much. There you go. All right, I got one, two. You already got yours. You already got yours. Good. All right. Where are the ones? All right, so one, two, three, four. Who's sitting here? Nobody? Can you put that over there so I can put one person here? All right. Yeah. There you go. Right there. All right, skin pads. Here we go. All right, 
I, I need names, year, and dream med school. Oh, we'll start with Blackhawks fan over here. Okay. Uh, my name is All right, Earl. Skin I'm going to Galveston. Earl, going to Galveston. Whoops. Liza, I'm Skin a junior, pack. and I want to go to A&M med school. Nice. Liza, A&M? Uh, I'm a freshman, and hopefully Dell. Dell for, sorry, what was your name again? Absolutely. I, Whoops. I hung. That's trash. Chantel, uh, Baylor College. Chantel, Baylor. JJ, freshman, uh, Baylor. Baylor. All right, JJ is going to Baylor. You guys, nobody wants to go outside of Texas, huh? Texas has hospitals. Everything's everything's bigger and better in Texas, I guess. That's what they say. That's what they say. All right, let's let's see it. Let's see what you guys can get. I don't know, Major Joe. You got anything else on this? So we maybe we get some music. Maybe you have a Spotify playlist. We're good. Who's got who's this? got a, who's got a Spotify playlist? Who's got uh, some Jeopardy theme music? Who can tune? Can you tune me up some Jeopardy theme music? No, just a regular instrument. Okay. Let's see hold on, hold on. Don't, don't, don't get started just yet, because this is a competition for time. The first person. Oh, oh, this is going to be time. How many do we have to do? Four? Four? No, just one stitch, but four, four knots. One stitch, four knots. To cut. Okay. One stitch. Okay. The competition is one stitch, four knots, two cuts. All right. Place your wagers. What? No, I'm only playing. Don't, 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 don't bet. <laughs> Just one stitch with a cut. Okay. One well, stitch with a cut. One four, stitch. Four knots on the other end, right? So no. it's like nice and tied down. Okay. So everybody have their uh, the, the materials dialed in. You guys are ready. All right. You have you have the music. Can I use your mic? Of course. <laughs> okay. And go. People's lives are on the line here, guys. There's no way I'm saving anyone with this stitch. It's trauma. <laughs> That's awesome. That was quick. We're changing the party music. Done. Four? What the hell? No, you said four. Oh. I think it's like one in the middle. Oh, did you did you tie all four? Yes. Or you tied uh, like nice. One, two, one. Very nice. I think we might have a winner. Yeah. Okay, Chantel. Chantel. Oh, nice. <laughs> Done. Very nice. You gotta cut it too. Done. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> I really trust him that this like black is in. Yeah. So I'm like, I pulled it hard. Why does yours look like this? Mine is massive. Yeah, mine's massive too. All right. All right, who's our hey, winner? Uh, Chantel. Chantel? Is definitely our winner. She, uh, she took that on without Chantel, a problem. Chantel, congratulations. <laughs> For you, you get one of the big checks. You. I'm gonna give you one of the Go Army Medicine lanyards <laughs> that, that, is, that is cashable to the school of choice. All right, but all you guys are gonna get, you all you guys are gonna get big checks. I appreciate you guys for, for participating and being such great sports, awesome. all right? Hey guys, we're gonna, um, we're gonna go ahead and we have some raffle things to give out as well along with big checks. I don't know, Major Joe, do you have any more big checks or is that it? Uh, it's, 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 it's just, just, just for the winners. Just, just for, for the winners, all right. Uh, Actually, our, our raffle stuff is pretty cool. We have um, we have a you know a couple of like sweatshirts and stethoscopes and stuff, um, but also we have some MCAT Go um, subscriptions, some MCAT Prep app subscriptions, and a scholarship for GMB, which is pretty awesome. You get to go on the trip or you save a bunch of money to go on the trip. So um, why don't we go ahead and start doing those raffles? You guys can keep practicing while we're uh, giving stuff away, and then um, the next the last talk of the day. I'm going to be talking a little bit about medicine, history of medicine, where we're going to go. Hopefully, it'll be fun and interactive. Um, hopefully, you guys have had a good time and enjoyed this and learned some skills as well. We'd love some feedback. We'd love uh, for you guys to continue you know, doing this and getting good at suturing and anything else that uh, you need to get to med school. So uh, Courtney, you want to take it away? Can I, can I just get, get oh, yeah, please, two seconds? Ahead. 
One, I wanted to give you one of the Garmin AMED stethoscope lights if you ever needed to uh, have a light on your stethoscope oh, to do yes. a, a um, what do they call a pupil dilation. There you go. Thank you for, uh, no, for helping me out today, saving the day, no saving, this, uh, saving this course. Guys, I have some HPSP scholarship information packets. I also want you to scan my QR code. With my QR code, if you are an Android user, it's a little bit different than an iPhone user, but when you scan it, you can hit save to contacts and then create new contact. And then once you have my contact information, scroll to the top. This is all of my professional contact information. You cannot use this on the weekend to call me to go out and get drinks. Nope. But if you are at the bar and you've had too much drink, call me. I'll drive you home. Don't get that DUI. Um, but if you guys want to scan this, you'll get my, uh, my contact information. Listen, don't choose debt. Debt is a what? A choice. Don't choose.